I want to welcome everybody back. I'm sorry I went over time in our last presentation. Wait, give me one moment. Okay, so at the end of our last presentation, I'm just having a few technical problems. Just having, we're just in a bit of music at our end. Okay, so at the end of our last presentation, we were dealing with the issue of, I'm just going to call it council culture. And I posed the question, if we were worried or afraid to challenge, to disagree, with Alan White. And I think everybody said that they didn't have a problem. They were okay to challenge her. I asked the same question about Elder Tess. And I don't know if everybody put their hand up but the vast majority of people said that they would not challenge what she has taught they would be afraid to question her so i want to ask a third question Put your hands up if you are afraid to challenge, disagree, um, or argue against Elder Jeff. So in all these questions, I'm not saying you disagree with everything that they talk, but could you, if, if I identified any particular topic, that you weren't sure about or that you questioned, would you be afraid to disagree with him? Okay, so a couple of people would dis would be afraid to, I don't mean afraid of him as a person to have a fight with him, but I mean afraid of his position. So if he said the bombs are coming to Nashville, would you be afraid to say, that's crazy or afraid to laugh at that or think it was a joke. <laughs> Sorry, you said Christina? I'm oh, not now. What about a few months before it was predicted to happen? A few months before the tweet. Okay, so Christina has been forthright and said before the split in 2019, 
he would have been afraid to argue against him, but not now. Is that because he's no longer in the movement? So Christina said she's not afraid to disagree with Elder Jeff because he's not in the movement anymore. Christina, you also said you're not afraid to disagree with Ellen White. Is Ellen White in the movement? Was that yes or no? Or? Yeah, the movement. Okay, so Christina feels I'm tricking her now when I say the movement. She says this movement or the movement. I'm not trying to trick you, but there's only ever been one church on this planet. It just goes through different phases. So feel free to contextualize what. Yeah, she has the truth for her own time. So uh, Christina said Alan White had the truth for her own time. Now, don't get me wrong, because I'm afraid of Alan White. It's 1861, and I'm scared of her. But I don't agree with what she's teaching. And I'm in a movement, and so is she. And I think she's wrong. It's easy for me to say that now, in hindsight. But I've argued way back, I think it's 18 or 19, I didn't clarify the year. The church goes into Laodicea Not because the members are bad. Why? You may not agree with it, but why have I said the movement goes into Laodicea back then? Any thoughts? Gloria. So Gloria said they rejected time. Is that what you said? The point I made is Ellen White rejected time. He's the one that did the rejection. We have evidence of it. And if I stood up in 61 and say, no, I'm a time setter. What would have happened to me? <laughs> I've been cancelled for sure, yes. So I only bring that up, Christine, because it's, it's, it's not that straightforward to just put her as a kind of a legacy issue because in her history someone who is thinking can see that she's doing something wrong okay i'll give her an example closer to home All these um, shakings, 
I can't remember who did the 2012 one. Who did that one? Was it Aaron? I think. Oh, oh. Kathy. So Kathy mentioned 2012. And my name's on there, of course. So what does that mean? So here, in 16, tree of life are against whom? Christine? Uh, Christina? Tree of life are going toe-to-toe -to -toe fighting against Elder Jeff. And they're saying, you're wrong. They dare to challenge. And what happens? They get cancelled. So I don't like doing this because it's because my name on there. The same thing is happening here. Who is this person fighting against? Elder Jeff. And who was right? So, the point I want us to see is that we to go to Adam White or Elder Jeff. And we haven't even tackled Miller. Who goes against Miller? You could, there's a couple of people, you can name one. Can you shout it out? No. Snow. He is directly challenging Miller. And just as it happened in our history, Miller's, in the UK we call them your mate, your best friend, You're a hench person, some people use the term. Who was that? Who was his right hand person? Millers. His name's on the chart. Right. Oh, his PR person. He says, while you are ill, because Miller's gravely ill, they're stealing the movement from you. And who wins the argument? Snow. You might think you know where I'm headed, or you may not. I'm not really headed anywhere. But what I want us to see is not, this is not a discussion about profits. It's a discussion about you and the reason why you remain when you've got issues this shaking that we're in now that's what I want us to consider you may be wrong you may have some crazy idea which we will just destroy we the clever teachers Or you may have a valid point. In which case, we'll just take the big guns out and say, Elder Tess said this on the 2nd of May. <laughs> now what are you going to do? You've been silenced or cancelled. And I want us to consider this issue 
because it has all the same characteristics as all these other shakings. We spoke about the sin and the sinner. And that would go to the message and the messenger. We have to be careful about how we handle those things, because he's really about a message, not the messenger per se. There are, there are various, there are different reasons why people remain in this movement. Even though they've got emotional, logical, or mental objections. And I think one of the worst arguments we can use is to say, Elder Tess said this. And it's something that we use over and over again. Not because she what she said was correct or incorrect. I just want to encourage us. It's just not a good way to behave. Because you fall foul on two issues, understanding and Sophia, wisdom. So this segment of our discussion isn't so much about what Elder Tess has said or hasn't said. It's about how we handle or manage the truth. So how do you know what the truth is? How do you, what process do you go to? How do you know what's right and what's wrong? So if you haven't picked up on it, we're talking about the source of your information. And the thing that's in vogue in our movement at the moment is when I go to some, when I share some crazy article, Someone's going to say, hold on. Let's check. And my question is, who checks the checker? Because you're going to take me to the, um, the media bias website or whatever the correct name is. And I'm going to say, I, I, I actually don't trust them. Because I know one of the auditors on there personally, and there's a bad person. So I don't know how that person treats his wife. And you're going to tell me. I don't care. Because uh, Elder Test said that's our definitive source to do, define what is a good or a bad source, what's right and wrong. And all I want to suggest is at the very best. Such a tool is imprecise and blunt. I'm not saying it's not useful. I'm not saying we shouldn't be using it. 
but you have to acknowledge it's a blunt tool. I've seen so many people in the movement use that as a hammer to silence people. And a simple question that I would ask, because I get cancelled, so I don't ask the question. Do you know who finances um, that operation? Do you know the people who are the auditors who make those decisions and the criteria for doing that? And I think it's, I think you do a disservice. To say, Elder Tess said, that's what we'll use, so we'll use it. Because next year, when she finds a better tool, Well, she finds out about my friend who's one of the auditors who abuses his wife. What do you think she would say or do? It's obvious she'd say, we'll move on to a better tool. And where would that leave you? When you see how you have handled uh, people, how you've handled this issue over the intervening period. I'm not suggesting we go back to the Wild West and everybody can just do what they want without any kind of control. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am suggesting is we need to be careful that we don't use tools to destroy people's humanity and their dignity. And we don't use leaders in the movement or in the cause to do that work for us as a proxy. If we've learned anything, when the concept of sifting or to use these tools, the thing that we should have learned is to become intelligent. And most of us, too many of us, have not become intelligent. We don't use these things intelligently. We just have bigger weapons to hit people with. And I just want to caution everybody that we should be careful how we handle the truth and how we handle one another. Something that I've mentioned before I was speaking to somebody recently and they spoke about Fox News as you know being reliable. And I may be incorrect. But the point I was making to this person is that Fox News is the name of the company. It's not the department at Fox. Because the news department at Fox 
is reasonably okay. Just as all the other ones are okay. Because when we talk about the news, we're not really talking about the news, are we? Our problem with journalists, if we want to use that title, is those who give their opinion about the news. It's not the news itself. So our criticism or these media bias websites, what we're actually focusing upon are people's opinions, not the news. There was an accident. Five people died. What news source would you go to? It wouldn't make any difference, would it? There is no bias in that. The bias comes in trying to figure out why or how five, pe five people died in that accident. And it's that subjectivity that brings in bias. So I want us to really always, it's more accurate to say, what's your opinion source? And if we're not clear on that, I think we can do a disservice to this movement's message. Does anybody have any questions or comments or feel free to disagree? Victoria. So um, in your example with the news, um, that is just true as it is, just presenting what happened. So I, I made the point, Victoria has said, with the news, it's just facts, it's what happened. Can commenters make their opinions about what happened? And that is considered the opinion. So a journalist or a commentator will look at that thing that happened, that news, and in their comment, they give a perspective or an opinion. So I want to tie that into the moment. I'm not sure if that's where you were going, but it's just something that came to my mind. So Victoria wants to tie this into the movement, and her point is that. that leader in the movement say a truth and then um, considering the cancel culture that someone takes that truth and adds their opinion to it. So what can happen is and does happen is that a leader will make a statement and members unwittingly or without realizing in thinking that they're sharing the news end up actually giving their opinion on the news and that word news is the message the midnight crime message Now, it's easy for me to say there's just objective, factual news.
but it's very difficult not to introduce your own bias into that. Five people died in an accident. If I laughed, um, if I smiled, if I had a, a fool's hat on, or I was crying, all of those expressions would change the news. If we can understand, as Victoria has just expressed, the complexity of this problem, as a minimum, we should have more grace, not only upon ourselves, but upon one another. Just want to add one more point. So a combination of Victoria's comment and, and my manipulating what she said, she spoke about a leader giving the news and then we interpreting what that meant. But you've got to know that the news that the leader gave is not news. The news is Russia invaded Ukraine or attacked it. When we talk about it, when that leader speaks about it, they're not giving news. They're telling you what that means, which means they're giving an opinion. And then we're going to take that and we say, teach the same message as the leader did. And then we're going to superimpose our opinion on top of that. And you can quickly see that we can get into a mess. Because how do you know that leader's opinion of the war in Ukraine is even correct? It's all based upon somebody's understanding or interpretation of the Bible. which 99% of Christianity would never agree with. Victoria. So this is about methodology. So the simple answer is yes. Well, I guess that's my thought was like, isn't that how we figure out what is truth because if you have the correct methodology then it would it should lead you to the truth so victoria said um that's what we do and if you use the correct methodology it should bring you to the truth the simple answer is yes I don't know if you've tried it before. I have. And I hope you have. In my experience, methodology is more of an art than a science. It's not like addition subtraction. Although that's how we portray it. Because if it was that simple, why just say, here's Miller's rules, go forth and prosper.
and it's not that you don't understand English. Most people have a clueless of what you do with those rules and how you begin to apply them. So I agree with you, it's about using the correct methodology. But I, for one, am a, a work in progress when it comes to that. Would it scare you to think that, I'll say me, could be teaching you something for five years based upon rock solid methodology. You all buy into it. And I said, oh, by the way, my methodology hasn't changed. I haven't got some super new understanding of rule seven. But everything that I taught you over the last five years, 10 years, 15 years, actually is wrong. I want to teach you something else. What do you do now? <laughs> Literally, what do you do now? I'm not, this is not a makeup story. This is the real life. What did you do, Samira? <laughs> what did you do when I did that to you? Okay. That's honestly what you did, of course. So there's an English word, I don't know if it's what the American translation is. That's bonkers. And you all did it. I was talking about Sunday law for a long time. Elder Tess said, I'll use their methodology. Weaponize it. Consolidate and strengthen it. because I'm better than them. And by the way, it's not Sunday law, it's equality. And I say, oh yeah, of course. Same methodology, but we'll go, we'll just swap it to equality. It's all good, we're all friends. Can you accept it hook, line, and sinker? It's going back to the salmon model. Explain yourselves. Because I can't. Victoria, you had your hand up. Okay, fell. Well, um, we're relatively new at the moment. You're saved from all that damage that I did. <laughs> no, but um, I'm smiling because... She has, to, she has to share my joke. No, because I'm smiling because I, I have with you many of the old ones. And the Sunday law, there are some. That Sunday law is still the privacy Sunday Sabbath issue. So Phil has said, he, even though he's relatively new in the movement, He's watched plenty of my presentations and others that talk about the Sunday law is the great test. And, and also the other one is the 45th president, the last president. Oh, the other one is the, the last president study, uh, Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Which is still good, by the way. Okay. Carry on. So, 
since I don't know enough, I don't discard them. So even because Fell doesn't know enough, he doesn't discard those studies. I keep them in the back of my mind. He keeps them hidden in a closet in the back of his mind. The best place to keep trash. <laughs> my experience so far has been with more studies, with more analyzing, answer will come. So we don't discard them. So with more study, with more analyzing, um, what will come? Answer. Answers will come. Okay, so I just want to give another perspective. All these folks, they all said, spun this story about, I think they're called Levites or something. And I said, I don't see any Levites anywhere. And I'm using the same methodology as everyone else does. And you know what people said to me? They didn't say, oh, we'll put it in the closet, back out the way, or whatever. I got cancelled. I did. It's taken me a year to get some credibility, some traction going. I had to fight against the system because I challenged authority. So I just want you to let you know it's not easy. Even I get cancelled in proxy. Um, Samaria, you had your hand up? No. Emmanuel? I had symptom because I'm using the same methodology to accept them. So Emmanuel said he accepts them because he's using the same methodology. And I like that answer because I keep on changing my answers on the same methodology. which I think is a definition of insanity or something. <laughs> Kathy. So if when Tess came along and said, you know, was Sunday law is not the issue, it's equality. So when Elder Tess came along and said, the test is equality, not the Sunday law, And said, okay, I'll go along. And I accept it. And I said, sounds good to me. I'll go along. Why do you question us? <laughs> Why do you question us? So I'm getting attacked now. I said, <laughs> like, why am I picking on you folks when I do the same thing? And I completely agree with what you've just said. But I use the word hypocrisy. My hypocrisy, hypocrisy is worse than yours. Although it's not hypocrisy. Maybe we might call it grace. Or humility. We could, however we want to see it, without putting a moral compass on it. I hope that me, that I'm willing to go where the truth leads. And even though when I talk about you, I put it in a negative perspective,
what I really want to do is to make you think about why you do what you do. Because like Fel, I have those closets in the back of my mind. I've always had them. And it can take me years before either I work out what the problem is. And then I'm brave enough to put my head above the parapet and be willing to get attacked. Not because I know the truth, but because I feel convicted enough to share my thoughts and ideas. I've made this point several times, but I don't think I've made it strong enough that people get this point that I'm about to make. If we were to say that Elder Tess is the messenger, without talking about numbers, not, not talking about numbers. If you're willing to accept that, then you should be willing to say that Elder Jeff was also the messenger. And if you're willing to see that, then you would know that I am not the messenger. And never have been. Because our concept of how we understand and view those angels or how we view leadership or teachers I think needs some adjustment. It takes some time for us to get used to the idea that we need to view people differently to understand what their work is and their role. So the very point that Kathy brings up is I'm going to say proof that I'm in the same place as you are. That I'm confronted with these truths that like each of you, like Fel said, I have some questions which I don't understand. Using my limited understanding of methodology, what I'm hearing sounds good. And because I have a fear or self-doubt about my opinion, I'm willing to put it aside in that box at the back of my mind and let things develop. And give myself an opportunity to familiarize myself with the truth. So all of that is true. And I think that's partly about what's going on here. But there's another element to all of this. I don't like women with short hair. 
I find it unattractive. I don't understand the point that they're trying to make. And I think it's wrong, the track that we've gone down. I'm too scared to say it, but I feel it. And as Alison said, I've got nowhere else to go. So I just don't say anything. But every time I look at all of these women with short hair, it just rubs me up the wrong way. It's that class of people that I want us to think about. In addition, that we still may have some concepts not straightened out properly yet. Aaron said something that I think is important. In March 2021, and I said, what's that marker? So he said, radical feminism, same-sex marriage. And I've already forgotten the point that I want to make, so hopefully I remember it. What other, give me some other markers here. Okay, so this is the formalization. And when you say the formalization is this way, Mark, what line would that be on? What, what group of people? One second. You don't? You don't know? The hundred, so 140, some people gave different answers. So someone said 144,000. Someone said 144,000. So someone said it's the 144,000 and someone said the priest as well. Anyone else? So is the end of the line the same as the formalization? Whatever we're going to talk about is this year. But when it comes to the priest, it can't be a formalization and the end of the line, can it? You can? So you're saying yes. Okay, so I'm confused now because I'm ignorant. So Samaria so said it's also panium. Um, Aaron. So Samaria and Victoria are both correct. Okay, so they're both correct. So you have two dates. You have two dates in 2021. So there are two dates in 2021. One of them is the formalization on the line of the priest, 2021. Okay, so our problem here is that 2021 is not a good marker. There's two events then. Yes. So it is on two. So it'd be 2021A and 2021B. Yeah. We've also got 2021 on the line of priests and 2021 on the line of the thousand. So you've got like four things going on at once. Okay. So we've got, we can't do the, what we're doing here. It's not that straightforward. That's the point that we've come to.
having come this far, whether it's the formalization or the end of the line for the priests, or the formalization for the 144,000, this is a significant event and things begin to change after that. Alison. Was the race murdered as well, that time period? Uh, so the question is, is race a component of this issue here? Um, so Alison has asked, um, is race to do with uh, this history? And I don't remember. And there's someone has an answer to that. Okay, so I'm not sure and other people here aren't either. Glory. I just want to add, um, we studied with Elaine that 2021 is also the death of the priest and the resurrection of the image of the priest that you gave in the Portugal studies. I did that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it must be good then. <laughs> what do you want me to write? So, uh, priest and then IP. Okay, so there's something about the priests and the image of the priests. And that was a significant truth because I said it, which I can't remember. I so if we go to the formalization, can we have significant problems with the message at that stage? Yes, Jackie? Yeah, I believe so. So Jackie says yes. Anyone else? So if you'd asked me, I would have said no chance. It seems a bit late to repackage the truth or unlearn something and learn something new at this late stage. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. It's still progressive even after that, Jackie says. Any other thoughts? Aaron? So what you're testing on is meant to be the formalization. So Aaron says, we, we say meant to be, you mean we are or we're meant to be? Uh, so just in any repeated pattern, what you're testing on the last time is meant to be the formalization of the previous. You have to say that. I didn't understand what you're talking about. It's my so ignorance. In theory, you're always tested on the formalization. Okay, so in theory, you're tested on the formalization. Why did you say in theory? I mean, you are or you're not, or it's, I don't know what you mean in theory. Uh, that's what we teach. <laughs> Okay, so we teach that you're tested on the formalization. We teach that you're tested on the formalization. Is that what you just said? So I have a question then. When you say we're tested on the formalization, Do you mean at the formalization? Aaron said no. Do you mean that we're tested 
on the issue at the formalization. We tested on these these topics. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay, so we get to a formalization. Some truth comes to the surface. And we tested on it. Okay, and carry on with the point you're making. So therefore, in theory. So we teach. So you can't change things after the formalization. So based upon that logic, that at the formalization, some information comes to light, which we're tested upon. And based upon that logic, it can't change. Is that what you said? Yeah. Aaron said it can't change. And the only reason things can't change in theory, it's because they're correct. Otherwise, they'd be changeable. Within that dispensation, can you still repeat what I'm just going to just say I didn't understand what Aaron said. <laughs> Unless you said something significant that I missed. Okay. <laughs> That was like just waffling, call that in, in England. Um, so if you're tested on this thing at the formalization, are you tested before the formalization? So was a increase of knowledge. What happens at the increase of knowledge? Some truth comes out and you're tested on that presumably. Well, if an increase of knowledge comes, you have to accept it or not accept it. It means it's a test. That's true. So Aaron agreed with that. Is that truth subject to change? Okay, so Aaron's going to say no. Because it's in the wording, it says knowledge. Which in an English dictionary means truth. Not really. So at the increase of knowledge, there's no mistake. But there's more information to come. but that doesn't make it wrong. Aaron didn't say this, so this is a question. Increase of knowledge, a truth comes out, you're tested on it, and it's the truth. But it's not properly developed yet. Is that correct? So everybody has either said yes or they've not objected. So the formalization is not an increase of knowledge, it's a completion of knowledge, if I can perhaps put it that way. This is a question. The knowledge is now complete, which means it can't be different, but there's added information now which consolidates or makes the thing whole because it's formalized. And you test it on it and it has to be the truth. 
Okay, any comments? Victoria, you have a comment? I was going to say, at least to what we know. Go ahead. Based on what we know, because there isn't any information that has been until. So Victoria says it's based upon what we know, because there's nothing new unsealed. So after the formalization, can something more be unsealed? What's the way mark that comes after the formalization? On the generic line, what comes what would come after formalization? So can I just call it the end? Or is it not the end? Yeah? You said close the probation. So that was, is that the end of the line? Okay, because now I'm confused in my own mind. Okay. I don't want to call it second advent. Do we agree there's five lines, yeah. five way marks on the line? Tell me which number formalization is. Formalization is none of them. Okay, so tell me where formalization would go. So it would be in between one dispensation. So in between the pattern, there would be two zones, yes. And then the second line is a formalization. Yeah. So this is the end. Okay. Uh, anybody got any thought, comment? Aaron. So it's strictly speaking, it's not the end of the test. Okay, so we're going to call it a test. Yeah. And what happens after that? Repeats. Okay, but does the line never end? Because that's that one. If you want, I don't. No, because then you go to a different line, 144,000. Which goes all the way to the second, real second advent. Sure. You're still getting repeating patterns there. If you've got repeating patterns, that means it's a repeat of something that's already ended, or it's. No, that's why ended, not correct. Okay. Okay. So if I wanted to repeat this here, yeah, you can't call this the beginning then. I can call this the beginning, but I can't call that the end. No, you don't call it the beginning. You call it the end. You said I could. <laughs> I just said, could you call that the beginning? You said yes. It's all been recorded. Okay, so we had, a, I'm sorry for our online people here. <laughs> We just want to call that the test. But we don't want to call it the end of something. And we don't want to call that the beginning of something, even though it repeats. If you call it the beginning of the repeat, that particular repeat, and the end of that particular repeat, and then you can't say nothing happens after it because it's the end. That's the problem with calling it the end. You have to not say nothing happens after it. So Aaron says, if we call this the end, we can't because something happens after that. And, and that's why we couldn't call this the beginning because something happened before that, so it wasn't the beginning. Unless you explain. Actually explain that whole concept. So, Aaron says you can do it if you explain it. So, I'll explain it. I don't want to talk about a repeating pattern. And I don't want to talk about what happened before. Even though I knew that it did, and it will. So why can't I just call that the beginning of this dispensation and the end of this dispensation? Good.
Okay, so I win eventually. <laughs> it's the end. And the one that comes just before the end is the formalization. Okay. Now you're not gonna put some more way marks in there for me, are you? If there's not gonna be any more, if there's not gonna be any more way marks, Aaron said, you can't have any more unsealing after that. And Victoria said, of course you can. So I'm confused. Aaron. As always, the methodology teaches that everybody's correct. Because. Someone taught me. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> okay, so it depends. Now you know why I have this problem with this methodology stuff. If no one can explain it to me, <laughs> like someone else. Explain, Aaron. It depends upon what. Sometimes it's what I was trying to explain earlier, and you just called it waffling. So Aaron tried to explain something, and I cancelled him. <laughs> Because in the first repeating patterns, we say King of the South is dead. So Aris is in the first repeating pattern, we say the King of the South is dead. That's formalization. At the formalization. I don't know what you're talking about, by the way. Uh, Jackie doesn't either. <laughs> that we're, that we're... Future. And in the future? Um, repeating. In a future repeating pattern, we say uh, the king of the south is going to resurrect. It's um, yeah, it's going to resurrect and then die its final day. So, Aaron just told me something that I don't understand what he's saying, but because I don't understand the point that you're making. Sorry. That in the first formalization it was correct the king of the south died is that like one that was that back here somewhere yeah 1996 time of the end magazine there was one here the king of the south died and then around i think it was 2019 elder test says um that was wrong so let me make if i understand what Aaron is saying he's saying this There was a dispensation back in the day. So this is a dispensation and there's a formalization here. And something happened then. And whatever happened then, in a future dispensation, something different can happen. Is that what you're saying? He said yes. So I agree with that. But I could be wrong. I'm not going to different dispensations or repeating patterns. I'm in a single line which is a single dispensation. And I could be wrong in my methodology. I mean, willing to accept it, it wrong, but you can cut everything out. You can get lines and you can cut them. And then when you cut them and put them underneath each other, you get these repeating patterns, but on their, on their own, they stand.
because in this line, there's no repeat. If I did this and I cut that and put that underneath, I can get repeats, I get that. Unless I'm missing something fundamental, which I could be. I think there is one thing missing, one thing left. I'm missing one point. When 21 is the formalization, 21 is the formalization. Then the next way mark is the Sunday law of the test. So this is the Sunday law. That's the line of the 144,000. On any particular line, wherever the name is. When you fractalize that any particular line. When I fractalize this. Who gets two more way marks in between 21? Sunday so that's why I asked ages ago, we're going to do this. You can't do that the way you've drawn it. That's, that's why we said no. But you can do it when you use a fractal, which is a different line. And so that's why. So that's, I'll leave it there for now. Okay. So we can fractalize this and we can get two way marks, but not the way I'm drawing it, because it's the way I've done it is wrong. Can someone put their, put your hand up if you know. In the last 10 minutes, you know what we're talking about. Put your hands up if you know what we're talking about. This fractalizing and what you can and can't do, how lines work. So about, oh, half the people know. Put your hands up if you don't understand what's going on. Okay. Me and my merry band of... <laughs> The spiriters don't actually understand what's going on. So Susan said the problem is my I have bad questions, <laughs> which I think is true. Okay, so let me just get this. Let me just get this clear then, so it's clear in my mind. After the formalization, which is a truth that is open to change or not open to change. Okay. So it's open to change. So we're going to be tested on something that may not even be correct. Yes. Just as a simple question. What's the point of being tested on something that you don't even know is true? I think there'll be more knowledge to the formalization, but there's no change. So Gloria says there's no change. Just add some extra bits in, but there's no change. Bill. Not only the dispensation, but in the context of what's being studied. So for in that context, in that dispensation, in, in my mind, as far as I know, it, it is truth for that time. Okay, so the, uh, Phil says it's true for that time and it's subject to change? Yes, that, that's why I said to our earlier discussion about keeping things in the back of my mind because it could be true for that time, for that knowledge, when more light comes. That's my question. If it's truth for 2021, You say it might not be the truth for 2023. Before the Sunday, it might not be true now. It's more like developed for that truth. Like, for example, the last president. The last president isn't here. The last president is down there. Right, and it was truth for that time. The 
point I want to make is this discussion is not about that time, it's about this time. So this dispensation. Can we say in this dispensation, at the formalization, which is this subject here, there's something wrong here that needs adjusting before you get to the Sunday law. That's what my question was. It's not about after the Sunday law and before the Sunday law. And some people think can't be. And some people are saying, of course it can be. And we've run out of time. So for everybody online, uh, we're going to carry on this discussion through the rest of our day and you're going to miss out. You should have got your tickets and come. <laughs> and, we're, and before we leave, we're going to, uh, Aaron just wants to make a point because his date would that be? So that would be 2001 and that would be? That would be 2014. That would be 2014. And that would be 12. So somewhere back here in 12. Said that there's going to be a, a Sunday law in 2014. And your point is? Were they right or Aaron said the point is, were they right or wrong? And my response to Aaron's question is this. From 12 to 14, from the formalization, and I know you don't like it, I'm going to say to the end, there was no development or change of the message. It was fixed. And the only point, and I, and I could be wrong on this because I think people are saying that I'm wrong, which is fine. I don't care what happens afterwards. Because I've come to the end. And I know for a fact that from the formalization to the end, there was no development, no change in the message. It was fixed. And my question is, from 2021 to the Sunday law, that's what I've got here, the test, the Sunday law, the end, it's the same thing, I think. It's the same as this pattern. Do we have an opportunity to say, we're going to change something? That's the question. And if the answer is no, you enemies, what are you complaining about? Why have you got questions? Why have you got nagging doubts? Because nothing can change. For the rest of you, what would happen if you found out that something would change? Chaos. <laughs> Someone said something? Chaos. There would be chaos. And chaos is a crisis. And a crisis is a shaking. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for your watch care over us.
we pray that in our frail humanity, in the weakness of our minds, and the passions of our hearts, that you would continue to be merciful upon us. Breathe upon us the breath of life. May the Holy Spirit infuse around us and within us goodness. And humility. May we learn to have grace for one another. As we handle the most momentous truths that have confronted humanity. It is our responsibility to bring the great controversy to an end. May we understand our responsibility. And may it mold and change our lives. That rather than being an enemy within the gate, That together, in unity, we would resist or repel the enemy that's outside. In Jesus' name, amen.